I'm Jessica Calarco. I'm at the Indiana, or I'm at Indiana University in Bloomington, Indiana. To me, to do sociology is about studying the world in context and how it works, uh, to understand people and the actions that they take, the interactions that they have with other people, and to understand how those interactions relate to institutions and to larger patterns of uh, social behavior and social inequalities. So. primarily an ethnographer. I, I'm someone who goes out and observes the world and tries to understand how people behave and interact in situations. Um, and so mostly for me that means um, I'm, I'm primarily focused on the sociology of education, um, where I look at how social class matters in interactions between children in the classroom, um, and interactions between children and teachers, and interactions between children and their parents, and interactions uh, between children and other students, uh, looking at sort of how social class patterns behaviors and how that contributes to inequalities by sitting and observing in classrooms, by talking to kids, by talking to teachers, uh, by talking to parents, um, and by um, looking at students' school records and kind of mapping all those different pieces of data together and trying to understand sort of the complex picture of social reality. In terms of um, the highlights of my work, I would say, are learning about being able to discover kind of how the world works, on, on some level at least, trying to understand the social patterns that happen um, and trying to understand kind of how individual behaviors can contribute to those larger patterns that we often see around us, um, but also digging beyond, digging deeper than just sort of the surface level assumptions that we all have about how the world works and using real data to discover um, what's actually going on here uh, and also why and, and kind of understanding why the patterns that we see happen. Um, and for me, that often focuses on understanding patterns of inequality that we see where kids from different social class backgrounds tend to be tend to have very different outcomes in school. They tend to achieve very differently. They tend to go to college at very different rates. And being able to understand a little bit about sort of how the kinds of interactions that they have with their teachers in the classroom or with their parents at home, how those kinds of interactions on a day to day level contribute to these larger patterns of inequality that we often see in society. So I think my, my research tends to be relatively policy relevant in the sense that I'm looking at big patterns of inequality in schools and in society more generally and trying to understand uh, the talk that I'm giving later today is about um, the role that teachers often play in sort of inadvertently perpetuating the inequalities that we see in classrooms um, by responding to students in different ways, um, by sort of privileging. One of my research tends to find that middle class students are much more likely to ask for help. They're much more likely to ask for accommodations. They do so much more proactively and persistently, but that they only those questions and requests only result in inequalities if teachers say yes. And so the, the, the talk that I'm giving later today is about sort of how do, why do teachers say yes? And how do they say yes? And what are the consequences of, of saying yes to those requests? Um, and what I find essentially is that teachers are um, privileging middle class students not because they are biased toward them, or at least it, 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 in most cases at least, but because of the time constraints that they're under, because it's they, they sort of have to rely on students to voice their own needs as opposed to um, having the time and effort and attention to diagnose those silent signs of struggle that the working class kids are much more likely to give off when they're having trouble. Um, and that they're also, teachers are in many cases worried about pushback. They're worried about pushback from the middle class parents, they're worried about pushback from middle class kids who are going to keep asking and demanding until they get what they want. And so thinking about sort of what would that mean from a policy perspective it's things like um, empowering teachers to be able to say no, to not be as worried about the possibility of pushback, making sure that teachers have ample time um, and efforts, or time and resources and attention in the classroom, and, and can learn to recognize what does it look like when a student is having trouble, even if they don't ask for help, and knowing that even if a student looks like they're distracted or off task, that might just mean that they're trying to work through it on their own, or that they're turning to a friend to ask for help because they don't feel comfortable turning to a teacher. Um, so helping teachers to recognize some of those micro-level things that they can do um, to um, be more sensitive to the needs of all of their students and also um, what they can do to help level the playing field. I mean, so I would say in terms of doing ethnography and doing ethnography in schools in particular, access is key and it can be a really challenging thing to find a school that's willing to let you in the door. Um, certainly for students that can often be an easier process than for faculty members because the students are much more unassuming um, and schools are, particularly in this era of accountability, schools are very worried about people intruding and people judging them. And so it can often be easier for graduate students especially to get in the door uh, with schools and those types of institutions. Certainly it varies across institutions. Um, but certainly being a friendly face and, and stressing to teachers and to administrators that you're not there to judge them that you're not there to evaluate them, that you're there to learn from them and to learn with them. Um, that that kind of openness um, and, and a willingness to um, not overly critique the people that you encounter in the field and to learn from them and to learn with them I think is critical for, for, for having success in that kind of, um, in, in gaining access at least for that kind of a field. Um, that's it. Thanks. Thanks.